money. Uh, in this case, uh, Catholica at Eclia. It's a very big deal, and it's even a bigger deal than the mafia because you could trace your roots back. You know kind of their aunts or uncles and so forth. So he had a um, business in the Bronx, a small jewelry store, made a ton of money and rolled with the zips in the banana crime family. All right. So now what happened? Okay. So he was involved with the three capital murder. You guys all know about that from Donnie Brasco. Um, uh, just uh, you know, not, May 5th, 1981. He was a guy who put his hand through his hair when they killed Dominic Trinquera, uh, Alfonso, Sonny Red and Delicado and Philip Lucky Jacon in a um, Dyker Heights social club ran by the Gambinos. Rizzuto was there with two other Sicilian hitmen, um, you know, to help them out. So he's the one who brought them in. He's the one who set them up. Um, and then he eventually also shot uh, Indelicado, or literally shot Indelicado in the head. So when they were dead at that point, they left the building and the cleanup crew came. So what happened? Okay, so this guy is a big money earner. This guy is a whale. He's an up and comer. Um, you know, why do things go south? Why do things go south quickly? Okay, so again, his paisan, uh, Rizzuto, um, he still spent a lot of time in Canada. He uh, had a close relationship with the Rizzutos, um, although he was a, a banana captain, uh, he still maintained his ties there. So in the 1990s, that's when the relations between Messino and Shacha started going south. Um, he was becoming more and more independent, and he was becoming more aligned with Rizzuto. Got very rich, uh, very strong, and um, you know he would actually um, favor Rizzuto in important decisions if there was a decision to be made between the Bananos and um, the Rizzutos. It appears kind of the first shot over the bow on April 30th, 1992. Um, Shacha's top lieutenant in Canada was Joe Lepresti. Joe Lepresti was found shot dead in a Montreal lot. Lepresti was a made man with the Bananos and was murdered, allegedly, by the Rizzutos um, and without any approval from New York, which obviously in that world is a very big deal. And rather than Chacha kind of going on the offensive and seeing who did it and possibly uh, getting revenge, Chacha actually defended the killing to Salvatore Vitali as justified because they said um, Lopresti became addicted to drugs. And just keep apart to this addicted to drugs part because that where the plot thickens. Um, later on, Rizzuto refused to send a hit team when, um, when Messino asked when they wanted to kill uh, Robert Perino. Um, Again, Chacha um, also supported Rizzuto on that decision. Um, and it's just interesting. At that point, you know, at that point, Messino's like, listen, I'm building, you know, Montreal's part of us. At that point, it was considered a subsidiary. Um, and that's how Messino looked at it. And obviously, um, Messino is George's boss or Galena's boss. So it's like, I keep ordering you to do things and you keep siding their way. And again, TG and uh, Graziano and Joe Messino were very close. All right. So now this is where it gets interesting. Um, again, the word on the street was that George was going around, which he might have uh, allegedly went around and said TG was a drug abuser. He was, you know, allegedly, quote unquote, not for that life, a crackhead and all these things that uh, weren't be able to be substantiated. Um, you know, even for then, back then, um, calling somebody names probably is a death sentence or kind of being subversive is a death sentence, but I'm going to get into why George was a lot more powerful than people think. Um, in early 99 at a wedding, um, Sal Vitale said George had to go it was set, set up with Patrick T. Filippo who invited Chacha to uh, a meeting uh, with Graziano over um, some marijuana rackets. Um, he wanted to look like the drug deal got bad because although the Rizzutos were considered a subsidiary, he did not want to piss off Vito Rizzuto. Um, you know, they they left the notes saying, hey, come here. The, the, the usual, unfortunately, got set up and got killed. Um, John Sp Spirito, as he drove the uh, De Filippo and they shot him with seven bullets, um, a passerby saw the dumping and immediately obviously called the police. And that's when they found the body. Okay. So the American side of the story is he pissed off TG, but the Canadian side of the story is substantially different. 
Um, the reason why I'm doing this is I got a strong tip out of Canada that I substantiate as much as I could. I also even reached out to some people on the U.S. side who were around at that time. And I got to um, validate a lot more um, of this information than, um, than, I, than I felt needed to and comfortable. So I'll give you what I got and then you can kind of make your decision from there. Okay. So the reason why he was important now, you know, Messino was, was actually a good leader. He would vacation with his people in Mexico. Um, you know, he got convicted in 04, but prior to that had a really strong ascension um, in the ranks. So after the funeral, okay, uh, Montreal became the sixth family.